Hello, I'm Gareth Jones and it's my very great pleasure to welcome PSP into my little shed at Strong Room. The most difficult project that I've ever worked on is the solo project that I'm just completing now because it was only me. I've been, and it's been a year, uh, I, and it's not, it's not every day for a year. I've done many other projects. It's, it's traveled over a year and over 50 years, really, getting to this point. But that's, but, and that's been super challenging trying to maintain perspective because it's only me. And uh, I sometimes can leave the studio thinking that's the best thing I've ever made for me. And then the next day I listen to it and I think, oh, it's nothing. It's a complete failure. So, so that's been a very interesting process for me, trying to make my own solo project, because I've been in a bit of a vacuum, a bubble with it, because it is my composition and my complete work. Now, it's not that I care about it more than if I'm working with someone else. It's that, that I'm in, in some way more responsible. I have a greater responsibility because it's all me. It's not, I care very much about the work that I do in collaboration with other colleagues and the commissioned work that I do if I get commissioned to produce or mix a record. Of course I care about it, that's um, central. To, so you can't do this work unless you love every minute of it, because otherwise you go crazy. But still, working on my own project, I have felt a, a, a great responsibility because, it's, because I, I have the responsibility for everything. It's a humble offering, but still very challenging. But a great journey, it's been a great journey. It was interesting the, the, making this sub bass on, on, the, on the track that I played you, the Trinity track, um, because I wanted to put some pedal notes on, on, on the track to, just to expand the frequency range of the track. And I, obviously I love bass like we all do, especially after a you know, a career in the 80s when well, most of my records didn't have any bass on them really. And I spent all afternoon, I spent a whole, I mean, essentially afternoon and early evening, I spent hours, hours on the bass. And then I went home and I was like, oh, I've just totally lost it, you know, I've gone down a rabbit hole, why, what am I doing? Why have I spent six hours working on a sub bass, you know, it's, I thought it's just crazy. I had the, the Moog mother, the, 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 the Model D Behringer, my, uh, you know, my DPOs from my Make Noise rig. I had everything hooked up. I was trying all kinds of combinations and everything. But, and then, so then I put it away, the track, you know, and I came back to it. And then when I came back to it a week later, I was like, that was some of the best six hours of my life. Because I, I felt I'd hit a spot with the bass. And but, but as I was doing it, I just spiralled off into infinity and thought, well, uh, when I left the studio, I was almost like a zombie. I thought, what have I done? Am I crazy? Why is, I was almost depressed. Why has it taken me six hours to get this sub, this bass as I want it? But then, you know, a week later, a month later, I, I'm just so happy that I bothered to do it because it does hit a spot for me. And, and you kindly said it hit a spot for you too. But that was interesting because I believe in trying to work fast a lot of the time because I don't want my friends to get bored. You know, we need to keep things moving. It's very easy to lose perspective when you're deep in the computer. But in this particular occasion, it was time so well spent and I was so pleased afterwards that I put that time in. That It was an experimental journey. I didn't know where I was going. I thought I must be able to get uh, you know, out of all my awesome analog equipment, I must be able to get the right bass for this track. And I was really pleased that I could actually do it. I've learned this from hip hop and, and, and rap music. The great uh, American bottom end is just so inspiring and wonderful, you know. Lots on, on Kendrick's records, on King Hunter, I think it's called, there's an incredible bottom end. And it's so inspirational. And it was really that kind of bottom end that I was trying to chase. And that, that's why it was worth the work, yeah. There's another story as well, that there's a piano, or there's a little piano on here, you heard it. There's piano all over this record, and the piano is, um, the piano 
from my mother's house that I used to play when I was about 14. And about seven years ago, I think, uh, I was in, visiting my mother, but at this time she was still living in the family house. And the piano was there, been untouched for years, really badly out of tune. And I multi-sampled it on um, something like that. And uh, then it just sat there, the multi-sample sat there for two years or something. And, and then one day I put it in contact and then I tuned every note. You know, obviously where there's three strings, it's chorusy, but where there's one string, you can kind of more or less tune it. So the piano, so the piano is intensely personal. You know, whether that'll, that's just backstory. Whether that'll ever go into the world or not, doesn't matter. But to me, that's amazing because it's not, it's, and of course it's a sample piano because the piano, I don't know where the real piano is now. The real piano would have, it, I had to sample it in order to tune it even. So, but it is when, whenever I'm, I use it or whenever I hear it, you know, that's like a 50 year old vibe for me. That's like, whoa, time travel. That's like real time travel, because it really is the piano. I, I'm not, I can't really play the piano, but I used to play it for hours as a kid, just banging out stuff on the piano. So it's the very same piano, it's the very same room. It's sampled in the room where I used to play piano as a kid. There's a magic in the walls of a room, isn't there? If you go into, I'm sure you, you've been, in, we've all been in many amazing studios. You know, and there is a kind of, if you go into a room where a, a wonderful performance was made, which even just one, somehow that's a special vibe. And somehow the room, I mean, it's a bit spooky for we're all kind of, but I, it's a, some kind of magic. Uh, and then if you go into a legendary studio like, I don't know, like Abbey Road or something, where so many great records have been made, it does feel like there's a magic in the walls. Lots of people say, we don't know what it is, but, but it is, it, it gives a special energy. On my project, everything is, you know, built from nothing. I mean, there's no, I don't, you know, it's just, that's just my aesthetic. For me, the sampler was never about, um, you know, c copying something that you could already have. It was about making something very individual and special, you know. <laughs>